Welcome back. So uh, today we're going to talk a bit more about hypothesis testing um, and work out a few examples, or at least um, go over the idea of some examples. So let's just recall the basic plot here. So the plot is we're trying to decide between different hypotheses. We have two hypotheses that we're going to decide from. So we're calling these H0 and H1. H0 is called the null hypothesis. How do we think about this? This is supposed to be the baseline assumption, um, which, you know, if we can't prove otherwise, we take um, H0 to be our assumption. Think of this as like innocent until proven guilty. We're only going to reject H0 if there is ample, ample reason to do so. H1, the alternative hypothesis, is our significant conclusion that we would come to. Um, to conclude H1, we should be sure beyond reasonable doubt is, you know, the, the motivational idea at least. Um, so um, how, do we, uh, how do we do this? Um, so the, the strategy is we, um, is typically we choose um, some sample statistic. statistic um, whose uh, distribution is going to depend on some way upon which hypothesis is true or not. So by the way our, you know, if we are able to observe this statistic, um, you know, then the uh, behavior of the statistic should be different depending on which hypothesis were, were, um, is true. And based on the behavior of the statistic, we'll then decide on H0, H1. And um, so the idea is, let's say, if the statistic is y, so y is some random variable, a function of my, um, of my observations x1 through xn. Um, so we choose some sample statistic and, um, and regions, um, r0 and r1, and we'll just call them for now. So r0 means um, except um, the null hypothesis. R1 means accept the alternate hypothesis. Um, reject the null. Reject um, the alternative. And, um, and, you know, so what are we um, interested in figuring out? So this is, this is the, um, this thing constitutes um, our so-called test. So a test is a choice of this statistic and a choice of these regions of acceptance and rejection for the various hypotheses. And then we just want to check um, what are the probabilities that, um, that we accidentally reject H0 when it's true or, you know, or conversely reject uh, H1 when it's true, etc. Okay. So um, let's... Uh, as, I, as I was saying, you know, today I really want to focus on some examples, so let's just play with this a little bit. So, um, so suppose, for example, that we want to uh, test um, um, the uh, hi uh, hypotheses, two different hypotheses, about a given um, population. Um, so, hypotheses about a um, population uh, mean. And um, we'll assume that these are normally distributed. So, for example, we might have hypothesis zero is that the mean is, um, I don't know, 50, for example. And hypothesis one is that the mean is 85. So this is to say, um, 50 is our default assumption about what the mean is, but um, but we think that maybe if our um, if our results are of a certain type, we might be able to conclude that our mean is actually um, is actually 85. So these are the two competing hypotheses. Um, let's just say um, we'll take uh, 10 samples just to pick a number, um, and what else might we assume? Let's let's pretend uh, at first that we actually know. Um, the variance of the population. Let's suppose that we know the variance is just, um, we just pick 120, okay? So standard deviation is like 11-ish, okay? So, um, all right. 
So now, um, how do we how do we set this test up? Well, uh, it's very natural um, to say because this hypothesis concerns the mean um, that we might use the sample mean as a as a random variable that we um, that we know about whose um, whose distribution we understand, which is related to these hypotheses. So, if I were to look at the sample mean then we know that this is actually a uh, normally distributed random variable um, with um, some given mean and, uh, and this variance. Um, and so we could ask, for example, um, we could, you know, what, what, so what do we want to say? We want to say, let's, if we just look at this, we're going to want to say that if our sample mean is sufficiently large, so we're trying to see, is H1 possibly true? If it's sufficiently large, then we're going to reject the null hypothesis that the mean is actually 50 and accept rather the one that it's 85. So of course, the important thing is that we don't reject the uh, null hypothesis when it's true. So we might, um, so what are we, what are we going to do? We're going to look for a value, which I'll call x big so that um, if x bar is bigger than x big, bigger than equal to x big, then we'll reject um, the null hypothesis. The question is, how big should we make that? Well, we would like that the probability um, of making a so-called type 1 error, the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it's actually true, we want that to be small. So we want the probability that we um, are in this range of rejecting the null hypothesis, given that the null hypothesis is true, this should be small, let's say less than or equal to, let's just pick a number, you know, 0 0.001, for example. So this is this number that we're calling um, alpha before, it's the significance of the test. Um, but we haven't designed our test yet, we have to choose this number um, x big, but, you know, we can choose x big by just looking in some chart, right? Because this thing, um, if we're under the hypothesis h0, then that tells us that um, that this random variable, oh, 120, it's a sample mean, right? That should be divided by um, n was 10, right? n was 10. So the variance of the... Um, variance of the sample mean is, is 120 over 10, 12. Okay, sorry. So um, so this hypothesis says that our sample mean is going to be a normal variable with a mean of 50. That's the null hypothesis and a variance of 12. And so we can just um, find by looking in a table some uh, number such that a uh, random variable of, of this type is going to be bigger than that with a probability of 0.001, right? We just um, convert it to a normal random variable and set it up like that. So, all right. So, and so, how would we actually uh, calculate this x big, for example? So, um, you know, so if we just say knowing that our sample mean is a normal variable, we could just so it has a mean of 50 and a variance of root 12. So this is our standard variable here. So really, what we would just do is find some um, number um, z little big, or little z big, or whatever, um, such the probability that this, uh, that the standard variable is bigger than that is equal to 0 0.001, for example. You could find this just in, in any uh, table. Um, and then, um, kind of reading this backwards, of course, this says that x bar is um, root 12z plus 50. And so you get the probability that, uh, that z is bigger than or equal to z big is the same as the probability of x bar is at least as big as um, root 12 z big um, plus 50. Okay. And so again, that z big value, you just look up in a chart, and that gives you um, uh, this uh, particular number, which is going to be our little um, x big. Okay. So... Um, so in any case, uh, what does this give us? This gives us a um, our uh, our region um, R one is going to be defined by um, our um, 
sample value um, for uh, you know, our value for the sample mean is uh, is at least um, this x big thing, and so in particular r zero would be the places where it's less than x big. Okay. So we accept the null hypothesis if we're not that big, and we reject it if we are. Um, the important thing that we've just figured out is the probability of a so-called type 1 error. That's the probability of uh, rejecting the null hypothesis when it's true, with, uh, you know, so um, of believing that they're guilty, even though that they're innocent, even though they're innocent. Um, in this case, this is... Um, this is only 0 0.001, which is, uh, you know, pretty good. Um, we haven't actually calculated the probability of a type 2 error, which is uh, not coming to the correct conclusion when the um, null hypothesis is false. So this is the probability that, um, that um, we uh, don't conclude x bar is less than, is, is less than uh, x big, so we don't conclude that the uh, null hypothesis is false, even though it actually is. So you can work out that probability, um, since again this is just another uh, normal variable, and we can and we know what x big is in this case. So we can just sort that out. All right. So, um, but now, for example, what if we don't know the variance, right? So one thing that we use here is that this is a normal variable and. Um, which where, where we knew the variance, and so we could just write down this uh, this nice um, x bar that's another normal variable, and we know all, all, everything about it, assuming these hypotheses, and that's great. So uh, if we don't know uh, the variance, well, in this case, I mean, we've, we've done this uh, kind of thing before. Um, uh, this is, uh, you know, if you want to say something about the mean, uh, the sample mean and stuff like that, if you and you don't know the variance, your best bet is to start looking at the uh, t distribution. So recall that um, if we look at um, the variable t, which is our sample mean minus uh, mu divided by um, the sample standard deviation, the square root of the sample variance divided by uh, root n, then this is a uh, t distributed variable. Um, with n minus one degrees of freedom. So that is to say, we know something about its um, its distribution, and um, the important thing for us is that it involves um, this mean. This is a distribution that involves this mean that we know about, and all the other aspects of it. This x bar and s are some uh, things that we're going to, you know, that, that we can measure, um, that we are measuring from our sample. Um, and so, um, in particular, we can calculate, for example, the probability that this t variable um, is, you know, well, we can find some value from looking in a chart, I'll call it t big, such that the probability that this t variable is um, is larger um, than it um, than some particular value under the hypothesis H not is for example 0.001. Okay, so uh, if we calculate um, if we calculate this t value, um, then we could so so here we're saying that our statistic that we're using for our test is this t over here. Um, we could say that R naught is if um, uh, T is uh, less than uh, T big, and our R1, where we reject the null hypothesis, is going to be um, T big or equal to T big. So if, if, if we remember <laughs> just for a moment uh, uh, ago, the null hypothesis was the hypothesis that the sample mean was 50, and the alternative hypothesis was that it was 85. And so, um, so you know, if the, um, if the, um, you know, if, if the, uh, if we're imagining that the mean is 50 and we write this uh, T variable uh, down for uh, assuming a mean is 50, so that's under the null hypothesis, and what we actually get are values that are um, that are bigger. So if x bar is, is looking bigger, looking more like the hypothesis H1, 
then um, you know if it's uh, after a certain point, this point oh oh one, we are going to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the mean um, should be bigger than fifty. So how does one come up with um, an optimal statistic to use to test a hypothesis? How does one come up with this um, y I think I wrote in the prior example? So um, there are some methods, and that's going to be the, uh, the focus of uh, next time. Um, for example, we'll look at the uh, Neyman Pearson lemma and some other ideas that help us find um, these uh, useful statistics that um, optimize in whatever sense the power of the test with a fixed value of alpha.